45th hearing of the last two years, and uh, virtually all of them have been what we call bipartisan hearings, where we invite witnesses to uh, help inform us about the issues rather than sit around and castigate each other. So I thank Senator Murray and for working in that way. This morning's hearing is about laboratory developed tests to help us understand and get a better understanding of how d diagnostics and testing fit into the promise of personalized medicine that we hear the president talk about so much. Senator Murray and I will each have an opening statement, then we'll introduce our panel of witnesses after our witness testimony. Senators will have five minutes of questions. Laboratory developed tests are medical tests that are designed, manufactured, and used in a single laboratory. They, these are labs in doctor's offices, hospitals, universities, state public health departments, private companies, places where scientists both develop and use tests to determine whether you have a disease or whether a certain drug will work for you. There are more than 60,000 lab developed tests available to Americans today to help screen for and diagnose diseases and conditions such as rare or emerging infectious diseases and different types of cancer. And as I will mention in a minute, these 60,000 laboratory developed tests are regulated by a process that includes the Center for Medicaid and Medicaid Services, CMMS, but they're not regulated by the FDA. Let me share two examples of lab developed tests. Last year, President Obama announced the Precision Medicine Initiative, which will involve mapping one million genomes and has the potential to transform medical treatment in our country. I attended a summit the President convened on the topic in February. There he recommended expanding access to a breast and ovarian cancer test developed by a commercial lab called Color Genomics. To take this test, anyone can ask their doctor to order it, pay about $250, provide a simple saliva sample, send the package back in the mail, and work with your doctor to understand your genetic risk for developing these cancers. As part of the President's Precision Medicine Initiative, Color Genomics said it's going to double the number of free tests offered to women. The test is an example of a lab-developed test, in this case, one developed by scientists in a commercial lab, regulated by CMMS, not by the FDA. Here's another example. A woman in her 80s goes to Vanderbilt University Medical Center for care. At Vanderbilt, someone takes, puts a needle in her vein, takes blood, and sends it to Vanderbilt's laboratory. Four days later, the doctor gets the results back from the lab, finds out that a certain blood thinner won't work for this patient. The patient would respond poorly to it. He prescribes something different. Using that one blood test, scientists at Vanderbilt can find out whether the patient has one of 184 changes within 34 genes that might affect the way their body absorbs, distributes, metabolizes, or excretes a drug. Through its award-winning PREDICT program, Vanderbilt's been able to put important drug interaction information into patients' medical records so that doctors can know how they'll respond to medication. The blood test they use for this is a lab-developed test in this case, developed in the lab of an academic medical center, Vanderbilt. Again, this is a test regulated by CMMS, not by FDA. Both of these examples involve the President's Precision Medicine Initiative. I visited Vanderbilt last month. Uh, the medical center has received $71 million five-year grant to store and help make useful all the data in the Precision Medicine Initiative. Dr. Zuder of Vanderbilt estimated that 95% of tests used in the practice of precision medicine or personalized medicine at Vanderbilt are their lab-developed tests. Let me emphasize that. She said that 95% of the tests they use in their practice of precision medicine at Vanderbilt are laboratory-developed tests regulated by CMMS, not regulated by the FDA. I received a lesson on those tests on my tour there. It's a good place to learn. The doctors in Vanderbilt's lab run about 4 million individual tests annually. Of those 4 million, 80,000 are run using tests developed by the doctors at Vanderbilt's own lab. Vanderbilt has developed 105 of its own tests. So Vanderbilt has 105 lab-developed tests, which it uses 80,000 times on patients there. 
The rest of the four million are done using FDA approved diagnostic kits that are developed by manufacturers and sold to laboratories and hospitals and doctor's offices where they're performed. We're holding the hearing today to learn more about lab developed tests and they're important to the advancement of medicine. We also want to discuss a draft guidance released in 2014 by the FDA that would require each of these 60,000 lab developed tests to be individually approved by the FDA. This would change things, it would change the way lab developed tests are currently regulated. They're currently regulated at the Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services, as I mentioned, uh, through something called CLIA, the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Act of 1988, which Senator Mikulski of this committee uh, uh, led. It was a bipartisan effort, and I want to recognize her for her leadership in that. It, the FDA's guidance about regulating laboratory tests is a draft guidance, but it proposes that all of the lab-developed tests that are currently under the CMMS CLIA program also be submitted to FDA for approval before they can be used. That would appear to me to be double regulation. Tests would need to meet the CLIA regulations and then each one would need to be individually approved by FDA. So what would FDA approval mean for Americans relying on the more than 60,000 different laboratory tests available in the country today, which would each one have to be approved by the FDA before they were used? First, patients might lose access to the tests until they were approved by the FDA. Um, I don't know how many labs would have the resources to put their tests through that approval process. For reference, as of 2010, it took about $75 million to bring just one high-risk device to market through the FDA process. Vanderbilt, for example, has 105 tests. If just one, the PREDICT test, is high-risk, that could cost Vanderbilt 30 to $75 million, you can quickly see how costs just to that institutions could add up to billions. We've heard from infectious disease doctors who've said in comments to the FDA about this draft guidance that they're very concerned, quote, that this oversight as currently proposed could impede patient access to existing high quality or state of the art tests and threaten needed innovation. The chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine at the University of Washington wrote Senator Murray and me, suggesting that the proper approach would be to modernize the CLIA system, at the CMMS system, to quote, promote continued patient access to affordable high quality tests without duplicative regulations. Under the draft guidance, unquote, under the draft guidance, the biggest loser, it seems to me, would be Americans who stand to benefit from the rapid pace of science and discovery. The vice president's leading the cancer moonshot. Lab developed tests have enabled much of the progress made in cancer research, allowing physicians to practice at the speed of science rather than the speed of the FDA. In one example, doctors began testing for mutations in the KRAS gene in 2008-09 using lab developed tests. There wasn't an option approved by the FDA until five years later in 2013-14. I'm concerned that the FDA already has a full plate of responsibilities and the agency has said it needs more money to meet those responsibilities. I look forward to hearing today whether additional or different regulation of laboratory developed tests is necessary. Senator Murray.